well, thanks everybody for coming tonight. Um, this is a uh, uh, this is one of these uh, times where we do a session, um, really where it is straight education, um, and uh, it, we're not a sales pitch, and we're not even really going to talk about our horses in any way. It is it is a straight conversation just to talk about a particular topic, and the topic we're talking about tonight is uh, is around. Um, uh, the entering of horses into races and how those are set up. So we, um, you know, and it is probably another one of those things where the novice who knows little about racing and little about the horse industry um, uh, is, is quickly and easily confused. Um, and as you should be, because uh, the horse racing entry thing is very different than almost any other, um, it's not, you, you don't find this in any other sports uh, uh, arena. So it, it's easily, it's easily uh, a place where, that, where confusion can happen for people. So, um, so let's talk about uh, some of the basics uh, and then, then we'll get into the nuances and, and even some strategy. So the first thing to understand is, is that you have to enter your horse if you're a horse owner or a horse trainer, you have to enter your horse into a race. Um, they, uh, it isn't like it automatically, you just show up the day of the race and all of a sudden you race. You actually, you actually have to enter the horse into, into the race. And you do that by calling the racing office of the, of the, um, at the track that you're going to run at. And you usually have to do it a, um, anywhere between uh, well, I would say uh, if, you're, if, we're, if we're just talking normal entries, anywhere between five and seven days ahead of time. Um, well, four and seven days ahead of time. If you start talking about stakes races, then the entrance is actually much earlier. In some cases, it's, it's two or even three or four weeks ahead of time where you start the process. But let's just, let's just talk about it in a simple form of entering any race. So the first thing... You, you should ask yourself is, okay, so how do you know if you want to enter a horse into a race? So what you have here, and uh, I'm going to turn my video back on. Um, I'm showing you right now um, what's known as a condition book. Um, and this is the condition book for what amounts to the month of uh, April. It trickles over a little bit into May for Laurel Park, uh, Laurel Park in Maryland. So, um, and this is, uh, you can download this online, you can find it on Equibase, uh, at equibase.com, and you can look up a track and you can go in there and pull down the condition book and on any, on any track that you want it. And what you, if you, and it, it won't be easy to see here, and that's, that's fine, I, uh, I'm not expecting you to read what I'm showing you, but the reason it is called a condition book is that it shows you for any given day the series of races that they're offering for a particular day. So this particular race uh, or this particular day um, was for races on April 2nd um, of this year, so April 2nd of this month. But to enter, you had to enter by March 29th, Thursday, March 29th. So you actually enter, um, you enter the race, um, like I said, for, in this case, I guess it would have been for four days ahead of time. And, and it's called a condition book because it lists the conditions of each race um, that you can enter. So, for example, the first race that they were offering was for three-year-olds and up, which have not won a race since October 2nd, or what you've never won four races and are in for a $5,000 claiming price. And they were going a mile and a 16th. So therefore those are the conditions to enter the race. So if it's for three year olds and up, um, so that means if you had a male or a female horse, you could enter that horse uh, in, into that race. Now you probably wouldn't enter a female, Females tend to get their own races. So the number two race is an example of that. The second race being offered is for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, with an open claiming price of $5,000 going one mile. 
So that race, if I had a male horse, I could not enter my horse into that race. I could also, um, in that first race, if I had a horse that had won six races and just won last week, I could not enter my horse in the first race because my horse doesn't match the conditions of the race. So that's, that's why it's called a condition book. It, it describes the conditions of the race. So let's just play through the process here. Um, on this particular day, we'll just stay in question, there were probably, if I get the number right, yep, there were 14 races being offered and uh, all with different conditions and different opportunities. Of those 14 uh, races, um, of those 14 races, uh, uh, the track is probably going to fill nine of those 14, okay? Uh, some, some tracks do as many as 11 races a day, some 10, some nine, depends on the day. But in this day in question, they wound up filling nine races. So what happens is all the trainers and owners out there enter their horse when a condition matches what they want. The, the racing office then tries to build the very most, the best competitive card that they can do. So, because they want competitive big fields because that helps gambling and gambling helps them make more money. And the world goes round and round and that's all a good thing. So, um, so the trainers and owners, we enter, and then the racing office decides which of the races fills and which one of those races they're going to use. Not to confuse things any uh, more than that, you also have the, uh, the situation, which is what is known as overnights. Overnights, overnights are um, extra races that are offered in addition to the condition book. So, and these are printed, the reason they're called overnights is that they're usually printed um, on overnight from the day before. <laughs> so when <coughs> they'll create some extra races. So if you think about that, there's probably for this particular day, there were probably, I didn't look it up, but I'm gonna guess there was 20 to 25 races available and there were only nine of them that were going to fill. <laughs> so if you're out there and an owner and you're part of our club, you'll hear us say sometimes, you'll hear us say things like, darn, we entered the horse and the race didn't go. And that usually means that the race didn't fill. And that's the process that just, that, that I, the, the process I just described is what happens when a race doesn't fill. And so that's, that's, Kind of how the process works, that I just laid out to you how interests work. But it is actually much more um, strategic than that. So uh, some other questions that will come up before I dip into the strategy, some other questions that will come up from people is they'll ask, oh, um, does it cost to enter your horse in a race? The, the short answer is, for all of the races that I just described, no, there's no cost. We enter the horse in the race, and if the race happens, um, it happens. And it didn't cost us any to enter our horse. Stakes races are different. So to enter a race like uh, the Kentucky Derby or, um, you know, any grade one stakes that you might have out there, there are costs to enter those races. And um, that's why they're called stakes races, that the, the owners are actually putting up part of the stakes that, uh, that go into it, and that's S-T-A-K-E-S, not S-T-A-K-S. We're not getting a T-bone out of this. It's, uh, it is that you're putting up a stake. So um, that's, that's uh, but that's, the, that's, that's one of the questions. Another question somebody that, uh, that people will often ask about um, the, the entrance process is, um, how do you, uh, how, how often, and I think this was a question, I just saw Chris Eldridge asked a question, how often do condition books come out? And are they monthly? The, the short answer is yes. Um, every track kind of runs their own process. Um, some are much more on top of it um, and uh, will publish it almost like six weeks ahead of time. 
Um, others are like up to the last minute. And, you know, when one month ends, they print the next one. Um, so it just depends on the track. But in general, I would say uh, about six weeks ahead of time. Um, so probably, uh, I would say, well, yeah, really any day now. I would, I would expect any day now. Laurel is going to publish their book that covers most of May. Well, actually, it's a little tricky for them because um, Pimlico kicks in, and so they switch the racing in Maryland to Pimlico, but the Pimlico book will come out, um, you know, really any day now for the races that are going to happen in Pimlico. So they flip-flop between the two tracks. So, um, but that, it'll come out any day now, and that's, you know, kind of a, almost like six weeks ahead of time. The book, the book that I was showing up to the camera there goes all the way through May 3rd here. And if you'll notice, um, now let me show you, now let's dip into the strategy. If you look very carefully here, you'll see I have lots of colored tabs on the condition book. And so what I do um, is, is that I go through and I take all of our horses and I tab every race that I think might make sense for the horse. Um, and I go through for every time I get a new condition book, I go through and I tab every single race. Um, and then what happens is I then, at least our process or my process, is I then call um, the trainer and I start talking about which races are the best targets for which horse and what's the timing on it. And, uh, you know, just so that we're kind of on the same page is, uh, is the short answer. So, so that's, kind of, that's kind of what the process is, and that's kind of what I do. Um, not everybody obviously does it the same way. Um, there's an old joke in racing that the most dangerous thing in the world um, is, a, is an owner with a condition book. Um, be, why? Because an owner with a condition book, most owners, um, not me, of course, but most owners are complete numb nuts on where a horse should race. They have a deluded dream of how good their horse is. And um, so a, a owner who runs around with a condition book trying to dictate when their horse is going to run usually means that the horse isn't going to run in a place where it can be competitive. So what do I mean by all of that besides the joke um, about owners and condition books? Um, before, before we started, uh, Gary commented about, uh, uh, I'm, in, I'm in my office right now, and you can see all of our winner circle pictures there um, from the last year up on the wall. And I will tell you that the reason we have won so many races um, and have been successful as we have been is, is that I am not a delusional owner of horses. <laughs> I know that the best way to win a race is to put your horse into the best race, to be as aggressive as you possibly can um, and find a condition that is as soft as possible so that you have a chance to win. So what do I mean by that? So let's go back to the condition book for a second that I was talking about. And I'm gonna highlight two races. So we had a race uh, uh, and on, uh, it looks like April 7th, um, where we had a horse, uh, my, uh, my pal Jerry, and it was for three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races, and it was for $5,000 claiming price, okay? Now, Jerry had probably just come off of a win there. There, were, there would be people out there in the world that would say, hey, you know what? What you should do with Jerry is let's up him. He just won a race. Let's put him in not for a claiming price of five thousand. Let's put him in for let's put him in for twenty. He just won a race. He must be able to beat those horses. And that's the kind of thinking that makes you lose races. Instead of putting Jerry in a place where he is going to be the best horse in the field or one of the best horses. That's how you win races. So the, the, the way to think of a condition book is how, what race can I put my horse in where he will be one of the three best horses in the field? 
That's what you should be thinking every time. The way I, I think about it is, is, is if that if I placed my horse in the right race, that horse is going to be morning line odds of six to one or better. If the odds are higher than six to one, then I probably place the horse in a race that it's my fault. Um, now, there are always exceptions, of course, right? Because we had a horse named Feel Proud one time um, that went off, I think, at 50 to 1, right off of a claim. And uh, when, when we, uh, you know, there was nothing we could do about that, of course. Um, and the horse wound up running second that day. Um, but it was, you know, it was a long shot going in. But we placed it in as aggressive of a race as we could. Um, we have a horse... We have a horse that's running on um, on Saturday at Gulfstream, and the morning line odds are twenty to one. And you might say, "Well, TK, was there a race where you could have been more competitive?" No, unfortunately, there wasn't. Um, there just wasn't anything in the condition book that matched the level we wanted. So we have to run the horse. Um, we just that it needs a race and it's time to run it. So you put it in where you can. Sometimes you have no choice but to just run the horse where you where where a horse is. Uh, I mean, where a race is available. Um, but the biggest thing as an owner and the hardest thing to learn, I think, is to not overestimate how great your horse is, and to constantly think how aggressive can I be and how cheap of a race can I run the horse in where we maximize purse money but at the same but at the same time maximize our chances for winning and that's the key so that's an overview of the entrance um, game some other questions that came up uh, I got some questions submitted to me by people who uh, could not make it tonight so I'll try to cover those which were were not as 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 um, uh, sort of covered in the preamble that I've already done is, um, can you enter two horses you own into the same race? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, in most of those times, when you do that, they, wound, they wind up being coupled, meaning, and you'll see this if you ever look at a, at a racing program where you see something where it says the one and the one A, that usually means that it's either the same owner or the same trainer or both. And they run as a couple. But there's nothing against the rules for you to enter two horses in the same race. I will tell you that it doesn't usually make a lot of sense to enter two horses in the same race um, because then you're kind of competing against yourself. But sometimes you can't avoid it. Some people enter two horses they own in the same race knowing that they're going to scratch one of them before the race. You see that quite often, and the one, and they only one of the horses winds up running anyway. Um, but those are those are all things uh, that can happen. You can have a one, a one a, a two, a two x. I have even um, seen a, a three and three b uh, all the way. So um, that's pretty rare, but it it does happen. Um, I've. I don't know if I've ever seen it, and honestly, I don't have an answer for you if it's even allowed. I've never seen anybody put three horses into the same grouping. I don't think that's possible. I have seen, uh, I, I don't think they group them that way if, if that's what happens and this, the same sort of ownership group has three in the same race. I've never, I, I've never seen that happen and I don't think it's even possible. Um, but that, I have seen the same owner uh, have three horses in the same race, but they don't couple them that way. Um, uh, another question somebody asked uh, was, how do uh, how does once you enter the horse, how do they determine what order of races uh, go in the program? Um, that's once again, that's all determined by the racing office. But I will say, usually the next to last race of a day is kind of the featured race of a day. So if there are nine races that day, the eighth race is usually the featured race. That's usually the, the allowance race or the stakes race or whatever that, whatever big race, uh, the biggest race of that day is usually um, the next to last race. That's how most tracks do it. 
Sometimes it's the last race, depending on the day. Um, and usually um, softer or uh, younger horses or maiden races tend to be at the, the very beginning and, and the last race tend to be maiden races or, or, or maybe horses of less caliber. Um, that's usually how they sort of put it all together. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that gave you a flavor for sort of how entrance work and how the entrance process works and some of the strategy that goes into it. The key thing I, I want to really stress is, is that the great owners of the world and the ones that win the most races are those that put their horse in the place to win. And you can only do that by being aggressive. So I'm happy to answer any questions or take any thoughts from the uh, field. Anybody got anything? Wow, I was that mesmerizing. <laughs> I was that mesmerizing that it just happens. So that's that's good to know. That's uh, that's always promising and reassuring. Um, uh, you, know, uh, you may you, you may want to you know if you you just want to have time to talk. Um, mention about how you know even though the goal uh, you have is to put horses in conditions that they can be successful. Um, the unknown of other owners or trainers who have had horses running against better horses but not winning, sacrificing their value to bring them down. That's right. Uh, then all of a sudden, you know, your chances lessen because of that. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I think, Gary, that's a, that's a great point, and, and, I'll, and I'll expand on it a little more and give a little more color to it, is the – the horse racing industry, like a lot of other businesses, has classes of, of participants, right? Um, every industry kind of has different classes of participants. I don't, I don't know any that doesn't. And the horse racing business is no different. Um, and honestly, we're, we at Wasabi Venture Stables, I would put us kind of in the, if there are four tiers of, four or five tiers of racing, we are in, depending on how you want to measure it, tier two or tier three. Um, there is a super elite group of, of owners. And, uh, you know, and those, those owners only, uh, those owners and those trainers that, that go along with them only can have a certain caliber of horse um, in their barn because of their, their expense um, uh, sort of uh, uh, basis, you know, they're just their, their, their ongoing expense and their ongoing costs of the horses that they buy um, uh, are, are of, uh, of a much, much higher caliber. And therefore, they can, they, they can only keep horses in their barn that are that, of that caliber because they can't make the costs work otherwise. And so often what you'll see when they have a horse that is, uh, doesn't quite come up to snuff, they will drop that horse down in class and run. They'll run that horse in a super aggressive fashion. And what they're basically saying is, hey, listen, the horse may be okay. It may not even be healthy in some cases but, or whatever. It may have minor physical I issues. But it no longer makes the cut for us but we are going to drop it way down and it's probably, it has a very good chance of winning and it also has a very good chance of getting claimed away. And we don't care because it doesn't match our needs anymore. And it, and as a handicapper, that's one of those things you should look for. You look for a large class dropper sometimes because you can see that and now, sometimes that large class drop is because the horse really is having issues and they're just trying to drop it to a level. But often a class drop uh, or two um, is just, especially if you know the barns and you know the quality of the owners and the quality of the trainer of why they're dropping, um, it can be a situation where they're just trying to clean out their barn too. And, uh, 
And now if you're playing at that tier and you're, and you've been aggressive and you put your horse in a place to win, there's nothing you can do about it. When a, when a much higher qualified horse just drops into your situation. Um, the one thing about that, about entering horses is you don't know which horses are entered into the race. It's kind of a blind situation. So you enter your horse, but you don't know who the competitors are. And sometimes you can enter your horse and have a very soft field, and sometimes you can have a very difficult field. But all of that is blind. Um, and uh, so it's a little bit of the luck of the draw, if you will. That's what you were meaning, right, Gary? Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the other thing you'll see is, is that there are – like anything else in, in, in situations, there are circuits where the horses are better. For example, we have a horse right now, thanks mom, who's running Saturday, is running in a race that honestly is very difficult. It's, even though it's only a $25,000 claiming race, the race is very, very difficult. Um, it's, a tough, it's a tough spot. And the horse, our horse just came off of a win, so it's not like we're, we're, we're shoveling out, uh, you know, sort of retreaded horses here. But, the, but Gulfstream is a very difficult place to run. And uh, the best horses um, coming up, we're getting on to the season now where they, they all start to ship out. But even that, they're, they're difficult horses. We're going to take um, uh, Thanks Mom after this race, and we're going to ship that horse north. And when we ship that horse north, the competition gets lesser. And all of a sudden, Thanks Mom's going to look like a superhero when gets up to Laurel and, uh, and uh, the rest of the mid-Atlantic tracks. So some of it is just, um, you know, the circuits that you race on and who you have to compete against. Any other questions from the, from the group? If nobody has any questions, the last thing I would leave you with is, is go download a condition book. Go to equibase.com, download a condition book, pick a track, I don't care which track you wanna pick, Download a condition book sometime and go through and read the conditions of the horse of the races. It, no matter what you like or don't like about racing, you know, if you're a handicapper or you're just a fan, understanding the condition book does a lot for you to understand how racing works and, and the strategy that goes behind it. So um, I would advocate for you to download a condition book, play with it. And uh, if you're in our club, um, I don't even have a problem if you read a condition book and say, hey, what do you think about, you know, running uh, Feel Proud in this race? I think it'd be a great race. Feel free to send me those thoughts. Uh, and I will tell you why or why not it's a good idea. Um, so, uh, but I mean, that's part of what's great about our club. So it's, uh, it's an interactive sort of educational moment. So. All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming out. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Gary is. Uh, yeah, Gary just left left me a, a uh, the the grammar of the condition book is not always the greatest. So punctuation and how they use the words end and or is sometimes complicated. But that that'll be part of the fun for you. Um, uh, anyhow. Uh, I hope everybody had a good time, and I, uh, I hope this was uh, educational and fun. Uh, enjoy your evening.